What is going on, YouTube? Welcome back to Fireside Rangers. I'm your host, Eric Wilson. Today, joined by my co-host, Anthony Rivardo. Today, we are here to talk about Capo Caco. Kind of shocked he's even still on the team at this point. You know, the trade rumors around him have been circulating pretty much all summer so far. But um, we do have a little bit of an update to talk about um, from Vince Mercagliano, the Rangers' biggest beat reporter out there. On a recent podcast, he was talking about Caco, and he said, and I quote, I'm pretty sure they're dangling Capo Caco and will pursue deals to possibly move him this summer. I think they're not thrilled with the offers that they've gotten so far, which is why he's still on the roster. So pretty much the only reason Caco's still here is because Jury's not impressed with any offers that other teams are cooking up for him. So we're going to pretty much dive into this, break this down, talk about Caco's future with the team. But before we do, make sure you guys like, subscribe, ring that bell to miss notification. Um, Please be sure to Leave your thoughts down in the comment section below. I love reading everything that you guys like to comment. And lastly, be sure to follow us on all of our social media platforms at Fireside Rangers. But before I really get into it, Anthony, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. I had a very nice birthday yesterday to everybody who commented down below on yesterday's episode and wished me a happy birthday. I really do appreciate it. Thank you very much. I had a great day. Uh, but it hasn't been the greatest week necessarily for the New York Rangers, or I guess past three days, maybe a little even longer if you want to go back to the draft. I know that there were some things that happened on draft night that, Eric, like you weren't super crazy about them sticking and picking. We're hoping to see them trade up. And I think that overall the common denominator with all of our complaints that we've had about the Rangers in the past couple of weeks and saying my complaints, your complaints, and viewers' complaints is – they haven't been able to get any of these trades done. Like that's been the common denominator. The Rangers had different free agency targets that they wanted to go after. They weren't able to because they did not trade Jacob Truba. And they've had different opportunities to maybe trade up in the draft order. But if you remember, they were planning on using Capo Caco to do that. Capo Caco is still on this team. The Rangers sticked. They picked. They made their selection. Didn't move up in the order. And now they're still sitting here with Truba and Kako on the roster. Both players absolutely know that they're not wanted here, yet don't want to leave for some reason. It's a very strange and uncomfortable situation for GM Chris Drury and these two players. But now Kapo Kako is apparently still getting shopped really heavily, and it's just a matter of time is what it feels like before he does get traded. The Rangers just waiting to get that right offer, according to Vince Mercoliano, like you said. So I think it's interesting, though, Eric, that all of the moves that the Rangers wanted to make, all of the moves that they had planned, probably to add a new veteran defenseman, more stay at home and more disciplined in his defensive work. They haven't been able to do that because they didn't clear the cap space and move off of Truba. They wanted to maybe pick up a top six right winger who could instantly step on and play alongside Zabanajad and Kreider. Haven't been able to do that likely because they haven't been able to move off of Capo Caco. Really, the Rangers are kind of shooting themselves in the foot here because they have players that they can't get rid of but so desperately want to. And I think that teams around the league kind of know that they are desperate to get rid of these players. I don't know how you feel about that. That's just the opinion that I have right now, the feeling that I'm starting to get. It seems like teams understand the Rangers are desperate to get rid of Kako, desperate to get rid of Truba, and they're not trying to take on those players. And because they know how desperate the Rangers are, they're almost trying to take advantage and lowball them with some of these offers. And that's why the trades aren't going through. So what are your thoughts on that? I'm curious to know if you kind of share that opinion with me. Yeah, I mean, as as far as Jacob Truba goes, I fully agree. He has his franchise pretty much held hostage. You know, he's, I mean, he has his no trade clause where he was able to submit a list of 15 teams. So sure, if the Rangers try to trade him to one of those teams, he has every right to say no and not waive that. You know, it's a part of the contract that he signed and was given by Jeff Gordon all those years ago. Um, But, you know, with Truba, there's this new implication that I've been reading about where there's a chance that if the Rangers try to trade him to a team that isn't on his no trade clause, he might just refuse to report. You know, he pretty much has this franchise in a stranglehold. He's not letting go. He doesn't want to leave because his um, his wife has work at the hospital. He wants to stay um, with his newborn child and all that and everything. So I don't know. As, as far as Truba goes, there's really not much jury can do. I know we've been a little critical of jury these last couple of days, saying we're a little underwhelmed with his performance. But at the end of the day, jury can't really do anything as far as Truba goes until Truba just accepts his fate. Maybe we trade him to like the Islanders or New Jersey or somewhere close, <laughs> you know, that he'll just accept. Um, not really much we can do there. 
as far as Kako goes, it's interesting because the Rangers are probably arguably shopping Kako harder than they are Jacob Truba, but you don't really hear that much in the media about Kako because there's, there's really not much to report. I, I'm sure they've received a couple offers for him. Um, Kako doesn't really have a say in where he goes and what happens there. But like Vince Mercagliano reported, the Rangers probably just aren't really too enticed by anything they've received. You know, Kako is the type of player who was drafted very high overall in the draft, hasn't really lived up to those expectations. He's a serviceable third liner. So to me, if I'm Chris Jury and I have a team that just won the President's Trophy, and has a very strong chance at making another run at a cup this upcoming season. I, I don't want to trade away a serviceable roster player for draft picks or anything towards the future. If I want to win right now, the only reason I would trade Kako is if I'm getting another bottom six winger or maybe a top six winger who's better than Kako. So yeah, you're looking for a pretty high return package for a player who honestly hasn't impressed that much. So I can't really say I blame jury for the delay on this Kako thing. You know, if, if teams want to just give us an equally valued player who can play in the bottom six, then what's the point of trading Kako? Just keep him at that point because he's a solid defensive player. Um, and in order to get a better player than Kako, you're going to have to sweeten the deal. But with what draft capital? We just gave away another second round pick to Pittsburgh for Riley Smith, we don't really have a lot to throw around. And I don't really think this team needs any major roster altering moves. This is to me, to me, I just look at this as like a bottom six deal. In a perfect world, we'd take Kako, trade him for another player who pretty much does the same exact thing, but maybe just a little bit better. Maybe someone who can also play the defensive aspect of the game, but maybe score every once in a while. So that's the only way that I would want to trade Kako. So to me, I think that would probably be the cause of the delay, but who knows? Like you said, teams around the league probably think that we're a little desperate. We're kind of like the laughing stock of the league right now because of this whole Truba situation. So who knows? Maybe people just aren't taking us seriously, don't really want to give us any real offers, but I don't know. I'm sure there's teams out there who, if Drury keeps looking, will find a decent deal for Kako. You know, maybe we package them with a couple other players with Anaheim. Maybe we finally get Zegers. I know. I've I've been against a Zegers trade, but I know a couple of comments from fans on our videos have said that they would be more than happy to see Zegers come here. So I don't know. I'm sure the right deal is out there. It's just a it's just a matter of waiting, see who's going to make the offer and who, where's Kako going to go, basically. Yeah, you kind of said exactly what I was about to say next, which was if Kako does get traded, maybe it's to Anaheim, maybe it's with the Ducks and they go ahead and get Zegers, which we've kind of mentioned a few times on the channel and it's an idea that i've warmed up to and to explain that i know i was pretty against it for the most part when we had that discussion but now that we're at this point uh with no tarasenko he seems like he may or may not be going to pittsburgh no Kane, no stamp ghost you know rangers kind of swung and missed on all of their top targets now that we're here i guess zegras kind of makes sense right like you're moving off of kako who is who he knows now we don't want him <laughs> he's just kind of gonna have to play for us play for a team that doesn't want him which is very uncomfortable and probably is going to shake up his mental fortitude and confidence during the season so moving off of him to get with a player who can put up 60 points in a season and zegras even if you're giving up a couple assets to do so you're elevating the ceiling of this team even if it is marginally you know you're not getting that first line superstar who's going to you know carry your team uh past the the panthers and win you a Stanley Cup, but you are improving your ceiling with Kako, who in the past, his career high was 40 points, and now you're going with Zegras, who's done 60 points twice in his career, so I do feel like that is a worthwhile upgrade, if you if that's how you want to look at it, as a one-for-one. One. Obviously, you're giving up some other stuff there to obtain Zegras, whether it be draft picks or maybe a prospect, whoever it is. Better not be Brennan Othman. We'll get into that in a future episode, but if you're giving, if you're looking at it as here are your lines, take Kako out, put Zegras there, that line is immediately better. And its ceiling has now improved by 20 points. And I think that's kind of the way that I need to quantify it in order to justify any moves. And I don't think the Kako trade needs to be argued uh, for too much in order to justify it. I think we all kind of understand. Former number two overall pick, should have been a better player than what he is. He's not going to reach that potential. 
probably settling into a bottom six role for the rest of his career unless he has a real resurgence going forward. And I will say to his credit, he did have an injury last season. Maybe we would have seen a better version of Kako. Maybe he would have increased his point total. Maybe he can have that resurgence. But I think we all kind of agree generally that the return on the investment is not there with Capo Kako. And moving off of him while he still holds some sort of trade value is probably better than letting him walk in free agency next year for nothing or then trading him when his value is at an all-time low. So I'm in support, full support of trading Capo Kako and going in a different direction. But I just do still struggle, and this was the theme of the last episode we recorded, Eric. I do still struggle to see the vision here for Chris Drury. Like, what is he planning? What is he trying to do? And again, I think that some teams around the league have an idea of what he wants to do and are just preventing him from doing it and not agreeing to his trade. So it almost feels like Drury maybe miscalculated a little bit here. He wanted to go into this summer and make some trades, wheel and deal, because he is really good at that. He has done an excellent job wheeling and dealing in the past to obtain the exact player that he wants. And maybe he expected to be able to do that again this summer. But teams around the league were like, we're not going to let you do that. And so as a result, he banked on the trades, didn't focus on free agency and signing players instead. And now there's not a whole lot of great talents left to sign out on the open market. So it almost feels like maybe it was a miscalculation. But again, I think a lot of it had to do with him being unable to clear some salary cap space that he wanted to clear with some of these players who uh, have yet to be traded. But I think it'll be interesting to see if a trade does happen. What are the what are the uh, Rangers getting return, or are they uh, you know going to be stuck with these two players for the entire season? Yeah, and you know it is all speculation. Like we'll never know what went down in Jury's office the last couple of days. But if there was a major miscalculation, I would have to assume it's the fact that heading into free agency, Jury probably assumed that he would have an extra eight million dollars to work with. You know, um, probably wasn't expecting Jacob Truba to just like put up a fight and not want to leave New York. So I'm sure it happened something along those lines. If I had to guess, in my opinion, um, as far as the Zegers thing goes, I do want to add one more comment, you know, because I've been very vocal about how I, I don't want to see Zegers be a Ranger. Like I don't see his play style and who he is being the thing that elevates us to Stanley Cup champions. But I do have to admit if the trade is hypothetically Kako and a prospect for Zegers, I, like I will admit, Zegers is a better player than Capo Kako. So I do think it would be an upgrade. Sure, you'd be losing Kako's defensive abilities, but for a team who's had problems with depth scoring um, in the playoffs and stuff, Zegers would surely add to that. So, and he's young, you know, 23 years old, have a could have a long future with the Rangers. But I don't know. As far as Kako himself goes, I, I do fully believe that the trade is coming. I don't think he'll be a Ranger by the time next season starts. Would, I wouldn't be upset if he was. You know, I see the pros and the cons of a potential trade, but I think the trade's coming. I agree with Vince Mercagliano, just, just waiting for the right offer, and I'm sure we'll see it happen soon. But I've about shared all my thoughts. Am I good to wrap up here? I'll just say I wonder if, you know, a trade doesn't come to fruition for – one of or both of Truba and Kako, if it ends up being something that's revisited at the deadline. I think that trading Truba midseason would be really difficult, uh, especially if he's not playing well, then there's no chance. You know, I, I think now is the time to move on from Truba, if ever. Uh, same with Kako, but I do feel like Kako could potentially be a midseason trade candidate. He's a player that's young, and maybe a team looks at it as let's rent him for the final half of the season and then maybe give him an extension in the off season and see if he's still a young player with more to unlock. So I guess a mid season trade could still be on the table if, if not uh, one very soon for Capo Caco, but I think sooner rather than later is the way to go with both of these guys. And I'm hopeful that they can do something. I know there's not a lot of free agents out there. I'm holding out hope that the uh, rumors of Tarasenko to Pittsburgh are false. I mean, you know, Eric, I think, really bef way before free agency even started. I think I said Tarasenko was the number one guy that I wanted the Rangers to sign. So with him still being out there, I hope that they just call him up and say, hey, want to rejoin? Been here before. You were great for us. Come back. Uh, I would love to see that happen. But 
They probably have to make one of these trades first before they can have that negotiation so that they can clear more cap space. So I don't know. It'll be interesting. They made that move with Barkley Goudreau, cleared up cap space there, and then did nothing really with it. You know, they didn't deal with a whole ton other than the Riley Smith acquisition, which is a decent one, but not exactly the uh, difference making acquisition that we probably were hoping for. So again, interesting, interesting start to the summer for the New York Rangers and Chris Drury. Hard to decipher what exactly went down over the past few days and why the moves that seemingly were wanted to be made weren't made. But yeah, I, I'm in agreement with you. I think Vince, Vince Mercoliano is one of the most plugged in reporters that covers the Rangers. If he's saying that the Rangers are dangling Capo Caco out there in trade discussions and trying to move off him, just waiting for the right offer. And he's probably right. And I'm hoping that that right offer comes in sooner rather than later. Yeah. Um, one more thing I will add before I wrap it up is uh, you, you mentioned Riley Smith again and, now it, it does have me thinking like I think myself and most Rangers fans are in agreement that Smith is going to play on the Rangers third line. I don't think he's good enough to play up there on the fourth line. I mean, the first line. So now you got four players right there for the third line. Got Will Cooley, Philip Heedle, Capo Caco and Riley Smith. Like who's, who's the odd man out there to me, unless Cooley goes down and plays on the fourth line, I think it makes Caco the odd man out. So something has to give, you know, something has to happen here because you can't have four players on your third line. So we'll see what happens with Kako throughout the rest of the summer. I'm not sure if the trade will happen, but I think it will happen kind of soon. So if it does or when it does, we'll be back to break down that full trade and any other potential moves that we make throughout the rest of the summer. So if you want to stay tuned for that, please make sure that you like, subscribe, Ring that bell so you don't miss notification. Leave your thoughts down in the comment section below on what you think Kako's future looks like with the Rangers. And lastly, be sure to follow us on all of our social media platforms at Fireside Rangers. Have a good one. And let's go Rangers.